I have two excerpts tonight from my novel in progress, Hiding Places, about a student named Suri who moves in with a group of artists after get, getting evicted by her roommate. The house she moves into is itself a work in progress by a trans architect named Havens. This first excerpt is from the middle of the novel, after Sudi spent a month building her room and helping Havens build the garden. I wrote this here, so I'm excited. <laughs> It'd be fucking great if you could stop calling me your stray, I say, feeling the sting of disrespect at the back of my neck. I was homeless, not an orphan. That's not, I can stop, I didn't mean to. I never heard Haven stutter, but I can't stop. Isabella stares, looking for a way out of this moment that has nothing to do with her. Ever not known where to sleep? Look in someone's eyes and known they were trying to figure out how to tell you that they don't want you in their house? Because that shit stays, Havens, and every single time you call me astray, you sound like that memory. You remind me that I'm only here as your emotional support guinea pig. And if I ever got in the way of your holy fucking mission, then I'd have to start looking again. I'd have to once again look at the park benches and wonder, how many pillows will it take to make that bar in the middle hurt less? I'd be at the mercy of classmates who can't even pronounce my name, much less see me on their couch. You didn't just open your doors to me. You've been using me, and that's fine. That's all right. You can be the queer Corbusier if you want. Just stop pretending you're also my, my... Get out of my house, she says it soft, weightless, and it infects me, and I'm unmoored once again, 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 because I have never known how to keep my goddamn mouth shut. I shake my head. My throat hurts closed. Get the fuck out of my house, she says louder before I drag you out. Havens, calm down, says Isabella. Stepping between us, eyes wide, Iris is entirely ringed in white. If you want to throw a fit, fine, act like you can kick her out, but she's my guest too, and my name is on the housing contract right next to yours. Isabella takes my hand and marches me to her room. I'm embarrassed by her plants looming over me, which is fucking stupid. Orchids don't mock, do they? Later, when I'm sneaking back down to my room, or I suppose what used to be my room, to grab my PJs, my toothbrush, my blanket, I find havens at my door. I just need to get my stuff out, I say, hearing orchids laugh. Can I go in? Havens moves aside, weightless again. Sudi, I, I stop in the door, one foot in the room, one foot out. I notice the red in her eyes around her nostrils, rubbed raw because she can never cry just from her eyes, her whole face leaks. <laughs> she breathes and shudders and breathes again, reaches a hand out to me. I step back all the way in my room and my arms bruise again, pulsing, telling me that she will pull me from this room like public safety did from my dorm so many weeks ago. Surimar, she says, I've never been homeless, but I am an orphan. We're all orphans. I haven't spoken to my mother in five years, not since she told me not to name myself after a faggot, and like, of course I get it, I, of course she wouldn't get it, but I thought, I got so used to your voice at the end of my sentences that I just assumed you knew. I didn't mean to hire you. I wanted to be your home. I still do. This is an older excerpt to not lighten the mood. <laughs> I find myself in the living room, staring at a sparkling cabinet constructed by Havens as a practical explanation of the difference between a collection and an anti-collection. I'm trying to separate them. Surely the pressed glass plates soldered together to form the see-through panes on the cabinet doors are an anti-collection, right? Some spiteful display of arts and crafts that must exist solely to remove a series of collectibles from the market. All around the cabinet, like branches of a tree, hang pictures of smiling, moody, carefree, sick folk. A black lady in a hat holds a vest over her shoulder, showing off her arms. The picture is signed Delma. A Desi woman with her hair in a wonderfully heavy braid smiles in what looks like surprise at the viewer. That's Jump, says Havens, pointing at the braided woman. She used to live with us, but she had an internship in Cali and decided to quit school and work. I nod, picking the next picture with my gaze. A white man holing an urn, smiling with his face cast down. Torresola, nodded Havens. 
he was in the same group therapy as Elise, but it was his partner, Segundo, that was Elise's gay dad when she was still trying to figure out how to even talk to girls. So this is your, like, queer family tree? No pictures of your biological family? The point of the, the point of this wall, she says, the point of all these collections is so I can feel like I have a history, like I didn't just emerge aberrant from a world unlike me. So no, no pictures of them. Thank you. Yeah!